Spider-Man 3, you done fucked it up. Spider-Man 3 is, of course, the end of the Spider-Man era, or more or less the end for Kirsten Dunst, Tobey Maguire, and Sam Raimi, all playing their respected roles in this part. And like a lot of trilogies, they always have to end on a lackluster or a shitty note, and this movie is both lackluster and shitty. This is by far the most infuriating and worst movie out of the whole Spider-Man franchise. Worse than Amazing Spider-Man 2, and yes, I will get into that you know, at some point. In Spider-Man 3, uh, we get Peter Parker finally hooking up with Mary Jane, he's gonna propose to her and everything else, but of course there's gonna be some situations that arrive. For one thing, you have James Franco once again playing his respectable role as Harry Osborn, who not only knows that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, but goes on a one-man vengeance, pretty much taking him down as the new Goblin. And his new outfit as the new Goblin is pretty much like the Rocket Racer knockoff. <laughs> and it looks really shitty, to say the least. And then, of course, he's got a subplot with him where Spider-Man knocks him out, he gets amnesia, and, of course, he slowly regains his memories back, trying to exact his vengeance. And there's a multitude of other subplots with a lot of other supporting characters that would go either absolutely nowhere or it's mostly forced. And it just doesn't work for the most part. And just because it's Spider-Man 3, they have to cram in a crap ton of villains as well. Apart from the new Goblin, we got the Sandman as well, which I would have to say he's actually the most decent one out of the bunch. But he's got his own little subplot story as well with Spider-Man. And of course, due to an immense amount of fan servers, we get Venom as well. And Venom is quite honestly the most ridiculous villain of all because not mostly because of the CGI work, which is pretty good for the most part, kind of a little Tim Burton-ish at times, but the fact that the, the character Eddie Brock that's in here is played by none other than Topher Grace, otherwise known as Eric Foreman, which is the most least threatening actor in the whole bunch in which the Eddie Brock character in this one is a complete 180 than one of the comic books. But they decided to play it off anyways as a vengeance story, which each of the villains have their own little vengeance subplot with Spider-Man. Or Spider-Man has this vengeance subplot with Sandman, because it turns out that it was actually Flint Marco that was the one that actually killed his Uncle Ben, but it was only by accident. He's not that bad of a fella, he only does bad things just to support his family and everything else which makes it quite all right for a supervillain like him to break the law and steal money. This movie is a huge clusterfuck, <laughs> as I said before. And uh, the music and the special effects don't really help at all, to the, say the least. I mean, yes, it's really that much, it's, it's a lot better, mostly pretty much the same as before, but it really doesn't help at all with the overall core of the story. There's also two other things I really don't like in here, where Tobey Maguire's character goes from lighthearted to dark after being bonded with the alien, alien uh, symbiote with little to no reason. But not only that, he goes completely full emo, and because he's evil, he has to throw up a dance number here and there, take advantage of Mary Jane and other, everyone else who crosses his path. And of course we also get, and of course we also get Gwen, uh, and of course we also get two other supporting characters, which are absolutely useless: Gwen Stacy and Captain Stacy. And for the most part, they're just like there, but they're not really doing anything. Sure, Gwen Stacy has a much more of a bigger role, mostly just dating uh, Peter Parker after Mary Jane breaks up with Peter Parker. But it doesn't really matter because it turns out that they were dating for they went on a date. And of course they just broke up, and of course, I guess Peter Parker broke off from the symbiote, fought, and at the, at the end of the third act, they pretty much, uh, Peter Parker and Mary Jane got back together again, which is, like, what the fuck. And of course the third act was also pretty terrible as well, because mostly because both Venom and Sandman near the end decided to team up to take down Spider-Man, but just because there's two supervillains now, Spider-Man feels like it's way too much for him, it's just so he goes to, uh, Harry Osborn for help, even though he kind of blew up half his face. And the most ridiculous part is that Harry decides to have a change of heart after realizing that his butler tells him that it was his father who pretty practically kills himself and not Spider-Man. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? Why didn't you tell me sooner? There's no question. Your father died by his own hand. You are so fired. W what? You've known that all this time. And you pick now to tell me? I thought this would be the best time to tell you the truth. I took a grenade to the face, dude! And the real cherry on the shit Sunday would have to be the dancing. 
There are three dance scenes in here which lead to absolutely nowhere and it's just mostly just filler. Overall, this movie is so exhausting, it's so terrible and quite infuriating. Which is why I have to give this movie a one and a half stars. There are some good stuff in here, but that's mostly in post-production and everything else. But overall, to its very core, it's, it's really a huge fucking mess. And I'm kind of glad that they kind of dropped this as soon as, uh, you know, movies like Iron Man and the Marvel Cinematic Universe was just starting to uh, kick off. Because there were rumors that they were going to do a Spider-Man 4 with some more characters. And, from, and I'm kind of glad, glad they just dropped it all together because it was just a huge, huge, it would have sounded like a huge, huge mess if you ask me. Alright, so now that we got three movies down, there's only two more to go, which is the Amazing Spider-Man Reboot Saga. I hope you guys enjoy this, and if you guys like, like what you see, feel free to click this little button right here for see, to see all my other movie vlog playlists. Uh, support me on Patreon, like, subscribe, and all that, all that other fun junk. And we will wrap up Spider-Man Week with a few more movie vlogs. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time on The Angry Joe Show. Wait, that doesn't sound right. <laughs>